right, we're live and I will let in the people. Hello, everyone. Everyone's so quiet. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy spring, Lanish. Yes. How come I don't see anyone? What do you see, Len? Hey, Mom. You see me? I can't see anybody. I just see my phone. <laughs> How did you come in? It looks like you're just on your phone. You need to come in through the Zoom link. Yeah, I, 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 I hit the, the phone number. Then they asked me for- No, don't IT. do the phone number. Do the link. Oh, do the link. Okay, I, I have to start over again, right? Yeah, close close it from phone call and, and do the link. Hi, Jerry. There you go. We can't hear you, Len. Lenny, come on, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny, we love you. You are giving Hi, us giving us life tonight. <laughs> it looks like his microphone isn't connected. I'm unsure. <laughs> All right, it looks like we have everyone in from the waiting room. I'll keep an eye on it. I'm sure folks are trying to find the link or get to the page and realize they didn't register. <laughs> so. We will allow them to trickle in, but we will get started. Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to the grace period in process showing. Um, so this group, the Building Bridges cohort, has been meeting for over a year now. We passed the anniversary of the first meeting. So all through the whole, the whole pandemic. Um, and one of the things that has kind of constantly come up in our weekly conversations is grace, giving yourself grace, giving others grace, having grace in, you know, in this situation, in this tumultuous time. Um, and that was kind of the spark for the grace period project. So tonight you're going to see some in-process showings um, from the Building, Bridging, Building Bridges artists. Um, eventually, these things are going to be a part of makeshift memorials that are around the city, um, basically that give an opportunity for the community to take place in kind of a ritual of healing, a ritual of mourning. Um, we know that one of the things that we've lost throughout this time, whereas we are losing, we're losing people and opportunities and ways of life and there hasn't been because of the the need there hasn't been an opportunity for community grieving processes um and so that is what we're hoping the grace period memorials um will do 
um, and that those kind of activations throughout the city will allow for that collective healing of um, various communities. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is share a video that was kind of, I think, the first the first kind of thing that came out of, um, of the conversations of grace and about grace period. And so this is a video that you're going to see, which is um, a, a collaboration between James Sprang, Ursula Rucker and Caitlin Green. So I'm gonna cue that up for you. Shall I write or say something new about grace? What is grace? What is grace to me? What is grace to you? Is grace peace? Yes. Is grace love? Yes. Is grace truth? Yes. All of it. Is grace kindness? Sometimes. Is grace compassion? Well, grace can be compassionate, yes. Can grace be disgraceful? Never. That would be a cosmic anomaly slash inconsistency. But aren't we living through a profound moment of cosmic anomalies? slash inconsistencies? I don't know. Are we? Regardless, grace maintains its position. You maintaining yours? Do you even know what your position is? Maybe your position is to, in all things, act, speak, think, and move with grace. But what is grace again? Okay, let's start over and over and over and over with grace till it is reached till it is said till it is made till it is remembered till it is done with grace Lovely. What an intro. Um, so how the remainder of the evening will go, each of the artists and one pair of artists are going to um, show some of the stuff that they have been working on for the final grace period project. Um, and after each person's segment, you'll have a chance to ask questions. So you can either put them in the chat or 
raise your hand and um, speak them out however you would like. Um, so we're gonna start with the one and only Ursula Rucker. Thank you, Lanish. Um, thank you to everyone here. Uh, hello, peace to all. Thank you uh, to Law Rask and the Painted Bride um, for making this continuously possible um, and making art and creativity and support of art and artists continuously possible. Um, let me share this piece with you one more time, speaking it right quick so you know how serious we are about this gray stuff. Uh, on October 6th of last year, I remember I was having a really rough day. So many of those now, um, more than usual. And we all, I think, you know, have relied on our old ways to our old trusted ways. And then we've built some new ways. And um, this process and this project ongoing, extending uh, with these artists has been, you know, really beautiful and a beautiful new way to, to heal and to move forward and, and stay creative. Shall I write or say something new about grace? What is grace? What is grace to me? What is grace to you? Is grace peace? Yes. Is grace love? Yes. Is grace truth? Yes. All of it. Is grace kindness? Sometimes. Is grace Compassion, well, grace can be compassionate, yes. Can grace be disgraceful? Never. That would be a cosmic anomaly slash inconsistency. But aren't we living through a profound moment of cosmic anomalies slash inconsistencies? I don't know, are we? Regardless, grace maintains its position. You maintaining yours? Do you even know what your position is? Maybe your position is to, in all things, act, speak, think, and move with grace, but what is grace again? Okay, let's start over and over and over and over with grace till it is reached, till it is said, till it is made, till it is remembered till it is done with grace. So I wanted to share that with you, speaking it clearly, um, and then taking, just talking to you for this five minutes and just telling you about the importance of this process of building. And that this whole thing started with a little something called building bridges. <laughs> and we have not stopped doing that since. Um, even when we forget about it, we're still doing it, you know? So now it's like kind of ingrained in, in everything. And I like that it's become really organic. And so now it's manifested and moved itself into this new iteration of grace period. And, um, you know, when Lanish said that they are gonna be making shift memorials. I always like, let me always say it in my mind. I'm like, make shift 
memorials, like everything is like word play and motion, you know? So like when we were planning this, um, everything is, you know, punctuation matters, Laura Raska, punctuation matters. <laughs> punctuation and pauses matter. <laughs> um, yeah, we think we, we're thinking about all of these things, these uh, spaces and places for breaths, for breaks, for for grace. Um, I wrote this poem on October sixth to give myself grace, to give myself space, um, and on a day where I didn't feel like I had any of that. And then I shared it with my uh, community, my cohort artists in this this thing we've been doing for a little over a year now. Well, for kind of well over, a, well, you know, year year and four months or something. Um, and then we built this, you know, like when I shared it on that day, I didn't necessarily know that it was going to grow into this thing um, that you just saw. And, and then like, oh, just, oh yeah. And then I sent it to Caitlin and then James, did his thing. and then it's like oh look we have this and um I, I wanted to share with you that story and that process because I think it's so important all the all the parts are important now you know I think they were always important but the parts are more important now to me than they've ever been you know and I'm paying more so much more attention to the parts and how they work together, how we make things together. And I just wanted to really take my moment um, this evening and highlight that because that deserves and earns a spotlight and a highlight because uh, in this moment where we're all so insular and um, isolated, to know that we can build things together and it be be really beautiful and impactful and meaningful and and to know that you could write something in your own moment of hurt and pain and and give it to your people and build something from it um yeah it's pretty spectacular and i, I just really wanted to you know say that that's what we're doing and um yeah it is about the grace period it's about the project it's about the all the pieces of art that you that that we're sharing and that you're going to experience and, and hopefully you know you'll follow this through when we roll it out into the public sphere um soon <laughs> but yeah just uh wanted to celebrate all the moving parts and the building part of this and the um and the community and the collectivity in all of this and uh, and the grace and let's not forget about it. Like, I hope when you leave this virtual space this evening after everything you've received that that will definitely be one of the things that, that sticks and stays and you give it to yourself and you give it to others. Peace. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, anyone have any questions or comments for Ursula or anyone? I, I want to say that I love what I love about that piece is like the questioning about what grace is and then the like directive to like remember it over and over and over because even as much as we talk about grace I mean, even just this actual group, like at least weekly in our weekly meetings, like it's easy to forget to give yourself, especially yourself. It's easy to forget to give yourself grace often. Um, so yeah, I love it. I love it. Thanks. Lynn. Any other questions? Luke Butler said virtual space of grace. Yes. Yeah, and give that and give thanks to to the to the always to these like we always give each other constant love and support. And I want to tell you, you know, I want to share that with you that so that you know, you know that we're always in the, in our weekly meetings, giving each other support and encouragement and making space for talking about other things if we need to in that moment. 
other than the project and the the work at hand you know there's always grace that there's always grace in our weekly in our weekly moments too so yeah give give thanks to lanisha and and, and laurel and lee the three l's <laughs> excellent all right next up we're gonna have james alistair sprang share some audio situations with us <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, so many sentiments have been shared that I want to echo. It's really just been truly like an honor to show up every week and like, you know, practice grace with you all. And I thank you, you know. Um, thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Lanish. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Kapoor. You all are amazing. Um, and I mean that truly and deeply. Um, so, I mean, at the at the beginning of this period of time that we're all experiencing, I got my hands on this like modular synthesizer, which just allows me to sculpt electricity, and that electricity has a sound. Um, and I think that's very. I think there's something beautifully metaphorical about that, you know, like tapping into. The electricity around you and trying to sculpt it so that it becomes the healing frequency you need to hear. Um, and uh, with that, I'm just going to share some sound that I hope can aid you in feeling into what I hope to make for this Grace Project. Uh, and I really, really want to thank Ursula for trusting me and sharing her, her voice this and allowing me to share share with you um so with that you know um I'd, I'd like to invite you to maybe dim dim your screen and maybe close your eyes and i'm gonna play some sound and we're just gonna try to sit in that sound for about three to four minutes i wake up in the morning I take a deep breath and sigh. I say when I wake up in the morning, I take a long deep breath and sigh. And I pray to the good Lord above, oh please let this new day As I stand beneath the shower, all I can do is cry sometimes. Mm, as I stand beneath the shower, all I can do is cry sometimes. Let that water wash right over me and wonder if my dreams will ever come.
um, thank you. Thank you for listening. And um, yeah, I hope to continue working with the cohort to just make gentle spaces to breathe deeply, meditate. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, James. We, uh, Noah said this audio experience was beautiful and needed. Thank you. Absolutely. Gentle spaces. Beautiful. Yeah, I want to just like sit in a quiet room and lay down and just like take it in. I love it. I love it. Anyone have any questions for James on the creation of his, how did you put it? Sound, what are you, you bending electricity? How did you put it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess the piece is gonna call, be called um, Our Vitality is Lush. And uh, the instrument used to make that sound is a modular synthesizer. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, so for our next portion, we're going to turn it over to Ani Gavino and Caitlin Green. This is an interactive portion, so you can uh, feel free to unmute when they might need some input from our audience. I'll turn it over to you, too. Hi, everyone. Hey, all. <laughs> um, thank you, James and Ursula and Lanish. Um, all really great offerings and I've heard all this stuff already but it's um, just as great the second and third times around. Yeah. Um, so we are going to, Ani and I are working on a piece called Moving Through Not On. So we're just going to give you a small picture of what we've been working on, um, share some of our movement phrases that we've been putting together um, and then just talk a little bit about process feel free to ask any questions afterwards. I think there'll be time for that after everyone has gone. Um, but for our first exercise, like Lanish said, it is a little bit interactive. So feel free to, um, to join us um, if that's comfortable for you and feel free to opt out also if you'd rather just kind of take it in, that's fair as well. Um, we are going to demonstrate three movement phrases um, I'll go and then Ani will go, um, and we'll ask for you to, as you're watching us do these, this movement, just jot down in the chat, any words that come to mind, they can be descriptive words or, you know, just any thoughts that come to mind. It can be, um, any images that it makes you think of. Um, any emotions or feelings that come up for you as you're watching. Um, but just feel free to write whatever comes to mind to you. It can be a phrase or a memory, anything that comes to mind as you're watching these phrases. And we're going to do this three different times. So again, I'll go, um, I'll, I'll say phrase one. I'll do the movement. Ani will do the movement. And then I'll let you know it's phrase two. And then I'll do the movement, Ani will do the movement. And then phrase three, I'll do the movement, Ani will do the movement. So there'll be three separate phrases to look out for. Um, we're each gonna do different ones. So feel free to write as many words as come to mind. You don't have to limit it to one or one phrase or one feeling, just whatever comes up. And we'll just kind of um, observe what pops up in the chat, similarities and differences. And um, I think it's just really interesting to look at um, you know, we used words to inspire these movement prompts. So um, I think it just speaks to perspective um, of how we all take in movement and how we interpret movement. So it's really cool to sometimes look back and see what came up for everyone in their different backgrounds and bodies and experiences in the world. So without further ado, this is gonna be without music or anything. So I just wanna move my camera so you can see what I'm doing, excuse the mess. I was just gonna say that, like, think about it like as if it's a game, because we had prompts to be, um, that started each of the phrases. So maybe you can guess what those were, and then write that in the prompt. I mean, in the chat box. Okay. 
All right. So we have, I'll take in the chat, phrase one. That explanation point is a, supposed to be a one. <laughs> Awesome, so this is phrase two, and we'll just go back at the end and look at everything. Or Ani, would you rather do it now for each one? Oh yeah, we can look at it. Sway, swing, flow, swirl, water, get into it, <laughs> rush, wave, tides, surrender. Nice. It was actually ocean. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of really related words. Yeah, I mean, ocean would have the swirl, the water, and the rush, and the waves, and the tide, and the ebb and flow. Yay! Yeah, so it's really cool how just from our movement, these very related words, these really descriptive words of ocean came up. OK, so we have phrase two. Here we go. I don't know if my camera's gonna capture all this. Let me see. <laughs> um, okay, so it is reading. <laughs> um, so our word was mother. That's crazy because I was about to type the word holding and I looked and my mom typed the word holding. And right Ursula before I typed it and then I didn't type anything because I was just struck by it. I was like, wait a minute. 
Shout out to my mom. Hi. I tried to say hi to you earlier, but I think there was other people talking. <laughs> oh, Caitlin's mom. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm a little bit mind blown about that moment because I was actually typing the word holding. <laughs> okay, cool. And Ursula got it too, like mothering, like, of course. <laughs> a mother would know. Reciprocate family leading, holding intimacy. I mean, yeah, that's the give and take um offering giving pretty much synonymous to mothering i love this great okay and we have one more phrase for you phrase three here we go Yay! What? Lanish! <laughs> Did I get it? What was it? Tree. So we have process, waiting, letting go, growth, sh shedding, release, receiving, embrace, change, shift build, branches, create, mold, tree, shout out to Lanish. Awakening, growing, growing, achieving, rebirth, unearth, emerge, bloom. Oh, it's so poetic. I love it. I feel like I almost want to use some of these words now. I might, I might have to copy and paste this chat. And we yeah. can continue our process with this. I don't know if we need to get consent from the, the participants <laughs> or not, but that's so many beautiful words that came from that. And yeah, tree was the last, the last prompt for us. So we have another exercise that I'll pass it to Ani. Yes. Speaking of poetry, um, we did some kind of Poetry, poetry processes, processes um, for this. Um, we actually got together one day and it just was, I was sharing with everybody in the cohort that um, my partner invited um, Alicia Wise, a poet, 
to teach them and, uh, and her partner, Mark Cuban, to teach her students. She teaches in high school. And um, I was lucky enough to take part in that process. She invited me as a guest. I've never done any kind of poetry workshop before. Um, <laughs> so that was super exciting for me to do kind of cross-disciplinary action. Um, intimidating moment right now because we got Lucilla Rucker in the house. <laughs> but um, towards the end of this, I, um, I will be sharing, or Caitlin and I both actually wrote the poem, but I'll be sharing mine today. Um, and, but before that, we're gonna do some participatory um, activity. I'm gonna write some prompts that came up when we talked about the word moving on or resilient actually. Because oftentimes we think of resilient as a positive thing, like stay resilient, you're so resilient, you know? You're such a, you know, you're such a resilient, you went through a lot, you're resilient. But what, it, what does that, we're trying to unpack what, what that means that, and what, um, what kind of other things are we erasing when we just say that, you know? So we came up with these words that we probably have said to ourselves. Oh, there. Thank you, Anish. <laughs> We're going to type it one. <laughs> so again, we've said to ourselves or you've said it to someone else. Maybe you've said it to a, a family member, a loved one. And these are, the, these are the words that came up in our conversation. Be resilient. Get up. Toughen up. Move on. Don't think about it and get over it. So in this process, my, I was thinking of also having a kind of performance where the audience is accountable for our performance. Oftentimes, um, we're here to entertain, um, and I'm wondering what, what would that look like if we're all accountable for this to work? So what we need is a sound score. Basically, we would need people to say these words to help us dance, to help us respond. Um, and if, again, it, uh, it's participatory, so if you don't feel like doing it, um, that's also uh, your, your option. However, if you do want to, that would be fun. So, I guess we can begin. Any questions from the from our audience? So, I guess did we say? Um, did we? I might have missed it. I'm sorry, Ani. Um, but so we're basically just asking everyone to repeat the words over and over as we move. Yes, yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry if I wasn't clear. So can I, I'm asking the audience to say the words, basically like be our song score, say the words for that, say the words for us as we try to dance or respond to the words. Um, think of it as like a choreography poem. You know, we need like someone to say the poem and we are gonna dance to it. Um, so feel free to unmute. Yeah, like a choreo poem, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Get up. Be resilient. Move on. Toughen up. Don't think about it. Get over it. Be resilient. Get up. Move on. Toughen up. 
Don't think Be about it. Be resilient. Get over it. Get up. Be resilient. Get up. Move on. Move on. Suck it up. Move on. Get over it. Don't think about it. Get over it. Don't, don't think about it. Be resilient. Tough it up. Tough it up. Move on. Move on. Get up. Be resilient. Get over it. Don't think about it. Get over it. Get up. Get over it. Move on. Be resilient. Get up. Tough it up. <laughs> ah, moving on. You ready, Caitlin? Moving on. Move on from moving away from home. Leaving all that I know for this quest of freedom, freedom from patriarchy, only to realize I left home for the land that vomits the root of this toxicity. Move on from a bad decision, a crossing with white supremacy, crushing me like a fish tossed and turned when a typhoon hits the island, leaving me with scars that is so deep it stings me with memories. Move on, close the chapter, but the poison still seeps deep within me, reminding me of my brown body, disposable, yet I stay resilient, because that, that's what youth is. Be resilient, get up, stop it up, move on, don't think about it. Get over it. I got a brown hand for our spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was so incredible. What? You came up no, with that. You don't got to know how to do all the things well, Ani. Leave something for the rest of us, though. <laughs> he came up with this poem from free writing for three minutes. I was like, okay, I said, you want to share your poem? Let me have a hind, because that was so good. <laughs> Any questions for Caitlin or Ani? All right, that was awesome. I love, and I love hearing the process behind like how you got to do that, that's awesome. All right, our finale tonight, uh, Anthony Carlos Molden is actually in the studio and able to show us, well, oh, hold on, we got a question. How did you decide on the prompt words? Oh, um, oh, oh yeah. So we actually, oh, wait. Bonnie, do you want to say a little bit about how we came up with the poems? And then that's how we pulled our theme. So, um, yeah, so from like the workshop that I took, they told us to write three images and then three action verbs. So from that structure, we created, you know, it expanded. And then the other words came out. So then from all of that more lengthier thing that we wrote, we picked three things that resonated with us that we felt like we could start off as a prompt for movement, correct? Yeah, that because those things kind of like overlap in both of our free writing. Yeah. Like those are kind of like the common themes that we both came up with after we started thinking about resiliency um, and what that means to us. 
And we both had like, whether it was the word ocean, I can't yeah. remember exactly how, cause sometimes it was like words that described like, oh, you had, you had words that were, um, you were using metaphors to talk about the body using words that reminded me of water. And so, and then there were words in my free writing that also were related to water um, and ocean. So we, we pulled themes like, like that. And then we had like three, three common ones. Rage was one of them. And rage was like the prompt that we used to respond to the words um, like be resilient, um, toughen up. When I think of resiliency, I think of um, like expecting, getting in the habit of expecting certain people to be resilient um, based on their background or what they can put up with, what we know they're capable of handling. So we just kind of treat them as such like that, oh, you can handle it, you can take it. So I'm gonna, you know, um, but yeah, yeah, Ani, Ani basically said it. We, we pulled common themes from our free writing. And Luke said, I love how in the phrases you had us repeat, don't think about it, is a low key affirmation rooting into feeling and not just thinking, moving on, et cetera, et cetera, and disconnecting from our feelings. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anything else for Ani or Caitlin? All right, live from the studio, Anthony Carlos Mobin. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry, let me get my hand and figure out anyway. Um, um, my my part of the project is a sculptural aspect. Uh, it's going to be about a, a seven foot tall sculpture piece that we move around from location to location, but uh, people can put, people will be able to, to uh, place their remembrances on the piece and in the piece, there'll be like different slots for that. So, you know, pe people that we've lost during COVID or really any anything, but you know, we're just dealing with that time right now. But I feel like, you know, for, in for anybody that's grieving, this piece is there for them. And it's, uh, it's gonna be made out of a uh, uh, stone. So, so uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make the form. Lanish has a drawing of it that I did. And I'm, I'm gonna make the form that you see, which is a feminine goddess form. And those, those three center pieces are tires. So I'm gonna show you one of the tires that I'm, that I'm working on right now. But it's also going to, you know, recycled material, which is usually my basis of materials to use. And I'm going to make this the uh, the the feminine form that you see around the tires. One tire is her head. The second tire she's embracing. The third tire she's sitting on. And she's going to be made out of like <clears throat> uh, mortar. So uh, it's going to be a, like a, a metal metal form that I sculpt that I shape, and then I'm going to coat it in mortar because I have a background in, in stonework. And uh, also, and then also the solar lights, solar powered lights, so that at night, and this is the to me my favorite aspect of the sculpture, uh, that when it gets dark, it lights up. So it's like a beacon for people, you know? And you know, and I mean, you never know. It's like, I've, I've walked around sad at night and it's like you come around the corner and you see that sculpture, the light changing and shifting and the, the soft form, it's the, the motherly goddess energy. Those are the, the pictures she's showing you now are, are uh, former pieces that I, where I've used recycled materials and solar power lights. So the, the effects you're seeing on that piece now will be similar on the, the new piece, but a different shape. And um, you know, the, for it to light up at night when somebody's walking home from work, 
sad thinking about somebody and for them to see that piece and walk up to it like a lighthouse you know that's the energy that i want that piece to give off even though it's not a lighthouse it, it is a lighthouse and so you know hopefully people will feel the love that we put into that and and that we're putting into this project you know to to step to it and look at it and then see that it's there for them you know to comfort them as well and that the piece that she's showing you right now is uh, uh good luck phoenix that was a good one over it was over by Farnhill hill park and and uh it did have that effect people you know they it made people feel comfortable it had a comforting feeling and that's what i try to do with pretty much all of my work you know i mean unless it's disturbing it's meant to disturb you which, you know, some of my work is, but mostly I try to comfort people. I don't, I don't, people get bullied enough in this world. So I really try to make my work to comfort people. And uh, we could step over to the, uh, step over to the, the tire, the beginning of the work. Can you guys see that? I'm just experimenting with the lights right now. And uh, it's going to be solar powered. Of course, the tires. Starting the preliminary painting of the tire and everything. And these are, this is some of the color palette. But of course, it's going to be intense. And this is the base frame that the, the piece is going to uh, be built on. So it has wheels and everything, so we can wheel it into place. But once it's in place, it'll feel permanent. I'll make it so that it locks into place. And the stone work that I'm going to do on it should make people feel like it's a permanent piece, not, you know. I've never had a problem with people attacking my, my work outside so let's hope that continues and we're just at the base you know we're just at the base beginning the other tires are going but once i get going it happens quick and then the stonework happens real quick so you know this week we're going to be in full swing and then it'll be moving on out into the public for everybody to enjoy and you know, and then also, uh, just like the other pieces, we we we're gonna have a you know beautiful event with with everybody you know doing their thing outside around the piece, and you know, so we can finally, hopefully, when we finally able to all come together, which is very soon. And this is some of the. Some of the uh, the little electronic stuff I'm starting to teach myself how to do. Take the pieces to another level. And, and that's that, you know? Awesome. I love that color and the, like, the, the color palette too for the rest of it. Is that, is the first one you have, do you envision that being the the head, the center, or the bottom? I'm thinking that's, that's probably the center. But I'm not sure, because uh, well, I really, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the other pieces up there, you know, and start messing with them. And then, you know, the, the, the pieces start to tell me. So whichever one resonates. But I, you know, my initial feeling was that that was the centerpiece. And I can't wait to do the uh, the sculptural stonework around the tires to really connect everything. So it's really hugging each other and just like the drawing, you know, really tight and together and whole. And hopefully everybody enjoys it. Awesome, yeah, Kevin Carter, who's watching us on Facebook uh, said, already feeling the love. So <laughs> already you. coming through. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
any questions for Anthony or anyone? Questions, comments, pledges to give yourself and others grace, anything. Where are you going to put it, Anthony? Uh, we have a few few different locations it's going to move around to, and then some are still open to suggestion. But definitely in Germantown, one location by uh, Germantown Espresso. There's the new mall over there. Yeah, that's right where it's going to go. Oh, good. Yeah, so just so everyone knows, Jerry and everyone, that this uh, maybe it wasn't. We're just trying to like share with you in a in a in these little pockets of time that we're given. So we're trying to say as much as we can, um, but just know this is going to be a public, you know, memorial. Um, yeah, with all of our all of our art infused into this public memorial, there are going to be a couple public spaces. My storefront window here. A, a, a nature um, a memorial, a memorial that's in nature somewhere. We don't know. It's going to be, you know, you'll see. You got to stick with us, though. That's the thing. You got to be invested. You got to be invested in this and you got to check back in. And that's part of the process, too, right? Everybody, we have to like. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to travel to see it. That's good. <laughs> right. It's going to be right here. You know, it's going to be close by you. Jerry, you're very close to you. Thank you, thank you. And then, and then we'll have an unveiling moment too, right? Cohort artists and and yeah. Lee, Laura will have a public somehow, yeah. whatever mm -hmm. whatever way we're going to do that, a public unveiling, premiere type of moment. So yeah, just wanted you to know that. But yeah, Anthony, that's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> love it, Anthony. I love it. Thank y'all. Also, Michael on Facebook. Said very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Any more questions on it? You're going to put sound on it? Oh, yes. There is that it, James Sprang sound element. I forgot to mention that. I can't believe that. That's, that's important. Uh, Yes. So James, that who did the sound piece that you heard earlier, is going to is that element is going to be built into the piece. I can't believe I forgot to mention that. <laughs> but that's exciting, too, because that's another level I haven't done yet with the other pieces. And then that's a part where me and James get to combine our piece and we're going to be doing future projects. Where. I'm building something and we're and we're building the sound into the piece and he's doing the sound. So I'm looking forward to that too. I mean, I know I'm talking again, but since nobody else is jumping in, uh, listen, it's so amazing that we've gotten to do this for over a year now and kept with it and did ha have done different things and moved in and out of different. Nobody ideas. fell off. Nobody, and, nobody and fell same, off. Of the same group of artists and we've gotten closer and we very rarely get to ever, hardly ever see each other in person through this whole entire process that we've been doing this. So I, I really, really wanna keep driving that home um, because I think it's so amazing. I personally never created continuously um, like this, I, I record tracks a lot with producers and I never get to meet them. They send me them, but this is like an ongoing. We, we meet, we, 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 we build, we talk, we, we do things, we have public moments, we come back insular and plan and think and, and all of this. And we've been doing this and it's been the same um, crew. And I, and I think that uh, is really amazing. Most people drive me away before we get to round two. So, <laughs> you know, and it's like, or half the, half the team drops off, you know, usually for not even serious reasons, just because they're getting bored or whatever. 
But everybody that started on this is still in it mm-hmm. and still excited and everybody still shows up with their part and everybody's part is still always amazing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for us to be able to do that all the way through this pandemic and we, and we did for people out there that don't know, we also used it as a way we, you know, we had a, a counseling group every week, as well as talking about the project. We talked about how we felt. Sometimes we would come, different ones of us would not be on camera. I'd be sitting in the same room with Ursula and I would be sitting off camera. Still talking and listening, but I just, you know, it's just how you feel that day. And we all had various things we had to survive and deal with for this whole year in our own little worlds. But everybody still showed up and and still did this. So that's, you know, like I said, it's hard. I, 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 I used... I believe in collaborations, but I don't think that most people can live up to collaborations because they, it takes another level of giving that a lot of people don't want to do unless they're, they're guaranteed some money or something, (laughs) unless they're guaranteed something. And we agreed what we were going to do and we did it. And we, you know, it wasn't, it's not even like that. It's not, that's not the feeling. Oh, am I going to get my turn? You know? It's not, it's never been like that. And I love that. You know, that makes me want to keep coming back and keep doing stuff, even when I don't feel like doing stuff. <laughs> I was saying there's no way that we're going to uh, drop off because there's three earth signs in our cohort with two Scorpios. Those mm-hmm. are not signs that will like drop off on a project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. grounded with and with integrity and you know I don't know if that was super planned but the stars were aligned mm-hmm. and it's crazy that we only met in person one time before we right before COVID happened and we got you know we've been virtual this whole time we we have one mm, one in-person event other than that and yeah, I, I even remember just like, we, so we just had our anniversary about, what, almost a month ago now. But that, yeah, that day that we met at the Painted Bride and had that dinner, um, we even were talking about it. I remember Ursula saying, like, it's some synergy happening right now, you know? Like, there were just things. <laughs> can't really describe it but just like weird synchronicity that like someone would say or something what you know I can't even pull what exactly it was but but it was like almost like in that moment we kind of were like yeah this is gonna be this is gonna work and a year later we're still collaborating and meeting every single week together like despite what's going on and I think what you said Anthony about collaborations can be really difficult sometimes but you before that said said um that when we when we meet it's not always expected that we're like drilling out work or ideas or you know inspirations and you know putting work out or talking about what we're working on necessarily yeah. it's like a space for comfort and care first right and I feel like that's why we can do what we do so well for each other because it's not about ego it's not about creating it's not about getting your name into the limelight or you know doing it's not competitive at all. It's all about joining and like caring for ourselves and each other. Like that, you feel that when we, when we come together every week. So yeah, yeah I appreciate everybody. <laughs> so I just want to say a few things because this is a project I've been wanting to do for a while. And it was more of a question, what happens when you bring a group of artists together who may or may not know each other? and um, just provide the space for process. Like nothing was prescribed from the beginning. It wasn't like, okay, you're all gonna work together and make something. It was more about how it was gonna evolve when this group of artists went away. And um, it's true what Caitlin said, like when we sat down at the table for the very first time, there was so much synergy there. Like it was already clear that this group of artists was connected. So, it's been, this has been an amazing and beautiful project that I'm, I'm so glad to have witnessed and experienced. 
<laughs> and, and, and we watch and we watch Caitlin, you know, go through a pregnancy and have a child and the and the baby pops up on the meetings now all the time. Leon, where Leon? <laughs> at? She's crying right now. She's in my face. <laughs> I this is a beautiful good. part of this process, though. This was, you know, and Caitlin will have Leon and some of the movement moments that she's done with Ani and, and Ani works with her daughter, Malaya. And like we're all and, and everybody's in this mix together. And um, it's really it's really the way that I love everything. Lightning, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. I thought I was on mute. No, this, this is real life. This is how we do it. <laughs> this is how we do it. Um, yeah, but it's just been beautiful to, to grow, to really grow. I mean, actually, see actual growth, um, grow together, build and grow. Like, it's, yeah, it's been pretty, um, I don't know. I think Shabbat, somebody should write a newspaper article about it or something. <laughs> I really appreciate um, this process. Like it's so non-capitalistic. <laughs> like oftentimes we're so like, oh, create a product, create a product, and we're on a time, a timeline, and every minute counts. Like I feel like that's like how even in the art industry, we're still in that capitalism. But like, really, we just, I appreciate the moments where, okay, we're going to meet what it's about. What, what is it about? We're just going to meet, you know? <laughs> like, it doesn't have to constantly, we're not machines to, who, are, who are going to, you know, create products for the audience all the time. And even this today, like, like this is not the finished product. It's not the polished work and to be comfortable to share that is something that I feel like we should give ourselves you know a pat on the back because you know back in the day oh no way can you show this stage you gotta wait till like the curtain is ready to come up and the lights everything is polished but here we are having a, a sharing a showing and and that is valid and and we are here to hold each other as we share. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to be able to reflect and to like see, see ourselves reflected in each other, you know? Um, it's, it's really been a beautiful thing. Awesome. Any final thoughts, words, questions before we move forward, giving ourselves and others grace? All right. We'll have a lovely Friday, a lovely weekend. Um, definitely keep an eye on our social blog, newsletter. Make sure you're subscribed everywhere so you can keep keep up with the project and know what sites we're going to be at with it um so you can join us there in in person thanks Lanisha. thank, thank you. you thank thanks you everybody so thanks everyone have, have a, a good time evening. thank you bye all thanks everybody one love <laughs>